My name is Graham Munro, I'm a photographer. I work in the domestic field of photography, which is basically uh, portraits and weddings. My previous life was a commercial photographer and I did a lot of sport work, a lot of magazine work. I've been able to take all the skills that I picked up in the commercial world and, and bring them over into the domestic world of just shooting portraits. The best way to get a great reaction from the children is to immediately establish yourself with them. So when I arrive at the shoot, we'll crouch down and meet the child, shake their hand if they want to shake, or give them a high five, and get them to tell me their name and how old they are. So immediately you're having a good chat with them. I think one of the, the best ways with kids is just to keep them active. We'll often start off with more of a static family shot to try and get everybody in and looking at camera, and then let the children go off and play. And, and that way, when they've sort of got a bit of space and moving around, you start to establish their own character. The key to getting interesting photos of children is to ramp up the variety and the fun. And it's all about lighting and composition. Maybe just lie down on the ground, get really getting down to the kid's angle and shooting really low. Maybe having some leaves or flowers or something in the foreground. So you get something out of focus in the foreground and you're focusing you know, back a layer and it gives a really nice point of interest and nice shapes. Maybe if you're photographing a newborn, they can be quite challenging because um, they don't often do something. And it's great to actually just photograph them when they're asleep. This way you can crop in on all the little bits of the body. So using a macro lens, come in and do little close-ups of hands and feet and then wait for little things to occur. You could be waiting a while, but uh, you know there could be a nice little yawn. Even when they're burping and the parents are laughing, you get some great little shots. So it's, often those little bloopers can be sometimes be the best shots because they're just expressive and really good fun, and that makes them a lot more interesting. A lot of the time, parents might just want really lovely little smiley shots of their children. These are quite easy to achieve, but sometimes it's best to get the character of the child, and that could even be quite a moody shot where the child is maybe not happy with you. And I remember there was one shoot I did, there was a little four-year-old, we were taking quite a few shots and then at one stage she was leaning up against the cubby house and the next minute she's just crushed her arms and going, you've got enough photos. That's when you just keep shooting and you snap, snap, snap away. And the mum, when she looked at the shots, she said, oh, you've really captured that one. She's quite strong and she's quite assertive. And that's always a great compliment when the parents come in and say, hey, you've really captured the child's personality here. Well, the equipment you need to shoot kids can be quite a simple one. You can just have one body and maybe one or two lenses. I'm a bit of a gear hog because uh, I love my Canon gear. Uh, I've got two 5D Mark IIs and I've got about five or six lenses. When I shoot, I shoot with two cameras. I have uh, one on my side that might have a wide lens, which is the lighter lens, and I might have the longer lens at the front. I can pull up, bang, shoot like this, and then go into wide shot, can immediately pull back and, and shoot with the other one. The 85 1.2, I, I love this little sucker. It's uh, quite a, a heavy piece of glass and it's beautiful. When you're shooting at a really low aperture like 1.2, the trick is always focus on the eyes and let everything fall out of focus. That can be a little bit hard when you're photographing a child, so you might need to be at a faster shutter speed. But the trick would be maybe pull this lens out once you've had a good little rapport with the child and they may be a little bit static. One of my most favorite lenses is this one. It's a 70 to uh, 2.8. Uh, beautiful quality glass, uh, often running it with the reflector on it as well. I generally run a, a, a spigot on here so I can you know, quickly attach it when I'm doing landscape shots or time exposure shots from a tripod. Uh, but this one is, is another secret little weapon. It's a 24 to 70, it's a 2.8. It's great lens. It's uh, really nice and sharp. And again, it's a good quality lens and a, and a good adaptable lens to get into most situations where you can just be shooting here, about a 24 mil, capture the whole scene, and then be zooming in on the children's faces. 16 to 35, uh, 2.8, another very good versatile lens, and it's what I would call my, you know, my wide zoom lens. So again, for getting in close, maybe the kids are playing footy in the backyard, come down low and get them to dive past you, dive over you, run through. Often that, particularly when you've got a few kids playing, you can get a lot of foreground information, could be out of focus, somebody in the background, and you're just constantly changing the shots by pulling pulling focus to the different planes. Again, you might be shooting on quite a high shutter speed, but generally start doing the rough and tumble games towards the end of the shoot, because you know, when you drop into injury time, that's usually the end of the shoot. For flash, I use the 580EX2. It's a great uh, adaptable flash. Normally shoot on TTL, and you can set it at the back here, and you can dial it down to be, you know, minus one, minus two for just a tiny little bit of flash. Another great little product for the flash is the uh, off-camera cord. And you can hold, so you've got really nice side light here. Bang, 
coming in this way, this way, this way, boom. And again, I'm playing, I'm not always locking. Sometimes I'll be checking the light and, and, and looking at it in the back and going, oh, I like that, and I might work that one a bit more. But again, when you're shooting with kids, you gotta be really quite quick. Another good thing uh, with the Canon system with the flashes is you can set them up to do master and slave. And you can run up to about five different units to have, have them sitting there. You can either have a trigger, a remote trigger on the camera, or you can have one flash on the camera and then you can have the other one over here. This one's the master, this one's the slave. And sometimes if you're using the slave one as a backlight, a good trick to do would be to dial it up maybe plus one, just to give it a really nice bright fill light in the background. Another great product is to use reflectors. Now, reflectors can be anything. It can be a bed sheet, um, or you can get these gorgeous ones. So I've got a very white reflective background here, and the goal's quite good. And what's really good when you're shooting outside, this is a scrim, so if it was really hard sunlight, hold this one above the child, might hold this one back in here. And the reflectors are really nice because it's all about lightening up the eyes. Indoor shots are sometimes a lot more challenging, but with the current range of Canon cameras, you can shoot with very high ISO and you can shoot in really, really low light situations. It's fantastic. I'm really liking the 1D Mark IV. You can shoot really high ISO in pretty well any lighting situation. The great thing with shooting not with flash inside is that people aren't aware that you're shooting and you can just be watching your kids play with a long lens. You can lean up against the door and just be firing, firing, firing. You often get some little great shots. So the trick is just always have your camera handy and then you're always gonna get those special moments. I'd say my number one tip for shooting kids would be if you, the photographer, go out there and you're having fun, you're going to get some good fun shots. You're going to keep building that rapport with the child. You're going to stay in tune with the child. And if you're playing and you're putting in the effort, the, the kids, they're so intuitive. They pick up on that and then they play and start having a great time with you as well. If you want to improve your photography, the best thing you can do is just keep shooting. It's the number one rule. You know, if you only go and shoot a little bit and then you psychoanalyze it to death, you know, you lose. You're best off just going out there and continually shooting. So if you've always got your camera there, you're always gonna be shooting. And, and you know, you gradually, you just get better and better and better.